My name is Jimmy. What's up, you guys? Jimmy here, back at you with another review for Ultimate Spider-Man Web Warriors. Now, before I get to the review, I want to let you know that um, I did not know that there was a new episode last week. Heck, my DVR didn't even record it, and my DVR is set to record new episodes, so sorry for the late review. But this is episode number nine, and the episode is titled Web War New Warriors. Um, this episode, pretty much, Spidey has all his new warriors together, and plus his old team, you know, kind of to train together to see how they perform as a team all together. You know, and after the little training session, they do amazing. Very amazing. But uh, eventually, Taskmaster bursts in, and he is not alone. He also has with him Cloak and Dagger and also Vulture, and he calls his team Thunderbolts. Now, Spidey kind of confused because, you know, he thought he became good friends with those three guys. <laughs> but um, Cloak, he sends his old team somewhere else. And pretty much uh, it's just Spidey and his new warriors having to fight off against him. Um, they were able to get away. And Taskmaster's entire plan was to break out Green Goblin. You know, so, um, but there were some other of the villains, uh, there to work with Green Goblin just to be able to kind of be a distraction of what Goblin really wants, which is some item that is on the helicarrier. You know, and they eventually, they're a, um, <clears throat> they're a, Artemis, um, uh, Cho, uh, he loses the spider armor, the the iron spider armor, but uh, you know, he, he was only he was mainly recruited for his intellect. So uh, they were eventually able to uh, take down Taskmaster's thunderbolts, and you know, with Taskmaster being uh, the guy that he is, uh, Cloak and Dagger join the new warriors, and um, you know. They uh, they were able to take down Taskmaster. Um, Spidey he gave Vulture a pass because he was his friend, and Goblin got away and used that same item to disappear. And that's pretty much it for the episode. Um, I have to say it was nice to see the whole entire team, but you know there's still like a couple other of those kids on that list that he did not go to because he didn't see about recruiting Squirrel Girl. Um, there was someone else that, that I mean, I know the face, but I don't know the name. He's kind of, kind of got like a fin-like thing on his head. Kind of makes you think of Mohawk. I mean, that's one thing I can wonder. I mean, he didn't go after all the people on that list. Only those six. Technically, five, because of um, you know, because Agent Venom was just his beginning. But um, you know, I have to say it was a really cool episode. It was nice to see all of the the new warriors working together, and it was nice that that um, <clears throat> that Cloak and Dagger joined Spidey because hey, they they were a part of uh, the Thunderbolts over a lie. Because Taskmaster made them believe that they could not trust anyone at all. And, you know, set lies about S.H.I.E.L.D. But, uh, you know, very cool episode. I think this episode actually uh, sets up the events, kind of is a starting of the setup of events in the next few episodes. Because the next four episodes is actually this uh, event called this uh, Spider Verse, which is pretty much actually a event that's currently happening in comic books. Which pretty much in the comics, it's every Spider-Man in the entire mult that has ever existed, whether a different time, a different time, you know, a different universe. Pretty much, 
pretty much every version of Spider-Man. But the show can't really be that extensive, seeing that it's only four episodes long. But I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing fan-favorite Spider-Man, which we already know about Miles Morales. Probably the most excited I got for this show. I'm like, oh, Miles Morales, because previously he did have an Easter egg back in season one. So it was, it's really nice that, that they're bringing something from the comics in the anime universe, which I think this could be the best thing from Ultimate Spider-Man. I mean, I know this season has been keeping my interest up, but this, this Spider-Verse event, I'm just so freaking excited. I'm so freaking excited. I wish I had a time machine and went forward into the future to be able to do it. You know. But all in all, really excited on when the Spider-Verse event happens. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be a two hour long thing. Because if I'm correct, in the UK, they aired all parts of Spider-Verse on the same exact day. So I expect the same thing in the U.S. I'm freaking excited. And hopefully from this Spider-Verse event we could see different versions of uh, the villains. Because like in Spider-Man 2099, I mean, you know, it's they have the same names but they're not the same people. Because it literally is the year 2099, but so, all in all, one thing I would really like to see in the Spider-Verse event is uh, to see a couple of past Spider-Man voice actors to return, because in the game, Spider-Man Shared Dimensions, it had three past Spider-Man. There was one from the animated series from the 90s, Spectacular Spider-Man, and even the old school Spider-Man. Hopefully we can get the animated series and spectacular. That'd be so freaking awesome to see. But that's pretty much my thoughts on the episode. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. And also, um, what version of Spider-Man would you like to see in the Spider-Verse event for the show? Just let me know down below. And um, uh, don't, for uh, don't forget to... Uh, Watch my reviews for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which, if you thought it was boring in the first season, it's gotten way better. Just trying to let people know so the show can get the ratings that it deserves for this season. But, uh, anyways, as always, my name's Jimmy, and until next time, bye.